We're at Castellano's House of Music. This is my dad's music store. This is my dad. He's not really my son, he's adopted. <laughs> We're in Staten Island, New York, so if you're ever passing by. And we're at 1013 Richmond Avenue. Last month I made a video about my guitar collection, and my dad had a few problems with some of the things I said, so I'm giving him the opportunity to, uh, to set the record straight. Where do you want to start? Okay, well I'm going to put the video on, and then we could, we're going to watch it here on the iPad, and then you can tell me, we'll pause it whenever you want. I think I was completely true, I, I never embellish stories. Right. <laughs> I'm Richie Castellano, welcome back to my studio. Today's video is about my guitars, and this is a video you guys asked me to make in the comments of a few other videos. Uh, you wanted me to go over my guitar collection. Now, I'm not really a guitar collector, I just uh, ended up with a bunch of guitars through years of playing. And today I'll go through them, I'll talk about when I got them, how I got them, Actually, why I got them. how many guitars do you have? I'm about 12. Yeah, now you had a lot of guitars when I was a kid, but then when you opened the store... Right, I put them all up for sale reluctantly, but uh, if you do one or you, you don't do anything. Yeah. We're going to start with this one. Now this is actually my oldest, not my oldest guitar, but the first one I got. And it wasn't my actual first guitar because I traded it. Now, I got my first guitar, which was a black Fender Squire Tele. I got that from my grandparents' store in Brooklyn, Bath Music. They had a legendary music store there. and. Uh, my grandfather sold me, 32. not gave me, sold me this. Uh, okay, uh, first, first, first point. Now, is that true? No. No, he gave it to me. Well, if he sold it to you, it was, so you have the value of your, you know what money is. This way, when you 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 don't buy something or get something and get rid of it, once you have to work for it, then it has it's better. Okay. Okay. All right. But, so it, but whether he gave it to you, I don't know. No, I don't. Rem uh, well, I didn't pay for it. You paid for it. Then I paid for it, <laughs> and that's different how. That's the same. So he gave it to me, but he had to buy it from my grandfather. And my father was very generous. In the whole scheme of things, if I could be half the man my father was, I'd consider my life an accomplishment, because he was a terrific man. My peeps over there watch the YouTube video. They know you, but they don't know Pop, my grandfather. Yeah. My grandfather was a musician. He was a bass player. He played upright bass. And if you've seen our uh, our video for There Will Never Be Another You, I'm playing his bass. So, uh, yeah. It was an old blonde K bass. Old, old blonde K bass. You know, that, you know how the neck broke on that? No. There was a, I think he was doing a fashion show, and the model tripped, and... Uh, fell into the base and broke the headstock off. Really? Yeah, and I think he glued it himself. I saw it, and he also put like a nail in there. Yeah. I think I'll put a picture, I'll, I'll put a picture here. Hey, uh, you do what you got at the time, you yeah. know? Yeah, and uh, yeah, and he actually had the first uh, music store in the family, which yeah. was in Brooklyn, and that's the music store we're referring to, so. And uh, do you remember that, uh, that Black Squire telly that I had? Not really, but vaguely, very vaguely. I just remember it just being so heavy, and I was, probably nine or ten yeah and I, and I told you I like it but well so we knew heavy. you were a weak child I was <laughs> and uh, we were trying to you know strengthen you up and man you up okay unfortunately so far it hasn't worked out uh, you know what I asked I asked for this I asked for this so this next guitar is a Rickenbacker 325 V59 it's a three-quarter scale guitar this was my first good guitar and I'd been playing That's for debatable. four years when I got it I was 12 I saw the movie Help, and uh, John Lennon was playing one of these. He was playing the black and white one, and I just thought that was the coolest looking guitar I'd ever seen. So I started saving money for it, and I had a piggy bank that said Rickenbacker Savings Fund on it, and I really wanted this guitar. Well, okay, all right. All right, what? Go. Yeah. You like the Beatles. Yeah. You were nuts for the Beatles. I see this guitar become available, and I go out, and I get it. I was wait no no, no. that's you're you're remembering this incorrectly. No. I definitely had a big cardboard Tootsie Roll Savings Bank that I wrote. I took. Would you have eight dollars in there? It took a very long time to get that eight dollars. I was a little kid. It didn't work. <laughs> Listen, you liked the guitar. I did. I went out and I got the guitar. You did. I hid it amongst my guitar cases downstairs. Okay. Yes. And then, waiting for Christmas to surprise you, we put it on the stand, hid it in the corner. Yes. And you did the world's worst <laughs> acting. 
Let me tell you that it was rank bad. And it came out like this. You looked everywhere around the room. I never seen you walk into a room like you walk in like this. La di da di da. You walked into the room on Christmas and you looked everywhere in the world around. And then you went like, oh, when you looked at it, it was it was it sucked. And then I know, little bastard, he looked at the guitar already. And then you did, and which you destroyed everything. Now, if you had any qualms with the guitar, you could have told me you didn't like it, which you do often. I love that. <laughs> you like your mother. Can't make you happy. <laughs> this is this is what happened. The months leading up to Christmas, my uncle Phil, who you guys know off the channel, had a flood in his basement, and he moved all of his bases to our basement. I don't remember that. Yeah, and now the thing is, my my dad and my uncle kind of have different approaches. My my dad, my uncle's approach is, oh, you want? Oh, look at this six thousand dollar bass. Go ahead, play it. Take it out on the gig. Go do your thing with it. My father's approach is, no, this is mine. You get yours. You want one? You will get you one. Whatever you want a Les Paul, you want a three thirty five. Here, here's your own. But don't touch mine because this is mine. I was never like that. As a child, I wouldn't want you to play with right. Me. As a child, as a child, Wait, and I'm a, I'm a child here. Where Uncle Phil, you're a child here right now. <laughs> you're still my child. Oh, oh, oh. The the point I'm trying to make is, I knew not to touch your guitars, and I knew. And then how did you find out about the Rickerback? Because you disobeyed. No. <laughs> It was Uncle Phil's basses, so I said, oh, look, here's his Rickenbacker bass. Yeah. It said Rickenbacker on the side of the case. Nice hiding job, by the way. It said Excuse Rickenbacker me. on the side of the case. L L Listen, Dick Tracy, <laughs> I want to know in what universe can you can possibly confuse, I feel like Joe Pesci <laughs> and my cousin Vinny. What, can you, a 327 Rickenbacker for a bass? 325. Well, anyway, as I saw a Rickenbacker. I took the case out and I said, oh, this is not a bass, this is a guitar. And then I went, oh, this is for me. <laughs> That was supposed to, that look I should have seen on Christmas. You should have seen instead this. of you going, la di di la di da. Anyway, thank you, Dad. I'm sorry. I love you. I'm sorry. You know I love you, even though you torture me. I love that guitar. I'll never sell it. I love it. It's yeah. it's a terrible instrument. It's terrible. It's horrible oh. guitar. I, I couldn't play the guitar. So I'm saying he must have small fingers. You know, I've no, been worried about him for a long time. <laughs> it's 1996, I think, and I have two guitars. I have the Squire Bullet. And I have the Rickenbacker. Now, what happens is you go through puberty, and then all of a sudden you get taller. <laughs> so I was having trouble playing on the uh, on the Rickenbacker, and my fingers were, were I wasn't able to play like leads. I was starting to get interested in playing leads. So I was borrowing a Les Paul from my dad. He had a '60 classic Les Paul, beautiful guitar, sounded awesome. I had nice humbucking pickups in it. Uh, it was just a fast guitar. It was great really? for the guitar. It was get into Eric Clapton really? for the Blues Breakers. So that was like, you know, what? you want like a 60 Les Paul to play the Blues Breakers. So it was the perfect guitar for me to have. And uh, one day I came home to play my guitar, my dad's guitar, but it sort of had become my guitar and it was gone. And my dad, I said, dad, where's the Les Paul? He goes, oh yeah, I sold it. I'm like, how could you do that? He goes, it's my guitar. Oh, welcome guitar, to the real so. world. Okay, okay, go ahead. Here's the, re here's the real world. My son lives in the bubble. And obviously, he's never been faced with these situations. When I opened the music store, and he glossed over this fact, when I opened this store, my friend Chris Segolini and myself, we were guitar collectors, you know, and I used to- Shout out to Chris. Chris loans me the um, Vox AC30 for the Bohemian Rhapsody video, so thank you, Chris. Go on. So. Chris and I, uh, I used to own restaurants at the time, and between my music businesses, uh, I, I wound up in a restaurant business for about five years. Uh, still playing at nights, you know, I, I played, you know, straight through. Uh, but on my day off, I would go out and look at guitars, and every time, anytime I had a, a mess or any kind of money, I would pick up another guitar. And that's how I wound up getting 36 guitars in my basement. So. Uh, we used to have a competition between uh, Chris and myself. I would get a 60 classic <clears throat> with flame, and then he'd get a one with better flame. Then I'd go out and buy another one with even better flame than he had. Then he'd go out and one until the thing was looked like it was on fire. We had unbelievable guitars. Let me uh, just interject for a second. There was one I remember in particular. You bought a 64 Strat, yeah. right? which was awesome. It was yeah. a great guitar. And then he went out and bought like a 66, which was 
<laughs> now, Chris loved the, the 64 Strat. Yeah. And I found on a highway in uh, Jersey a guy who had a 66. I, I, so we I went, went with out, you. Yeah, right. We yeah. went out and we bought him one because we used to do everything together, me and Chris. We're like, you know, very tight. Like, so we always bought guitars together. But here's what, part getting back to the, the Les Pauls. I had to sell guitars, and I, this goes up to every guitar player in the world and say this next few sentences. We have all sold guitars. We're so sorry that we sold them because whatever put us into that position where we had to put it up for sale and then we lament that we sold it. And we, I spent years trying to find, I sold a guitar to Elvin Bishop, a 355 that was in white. I sold it to him on my honeymoon in 1977 in Vegas. And I went backstage, I said, you know, I'm, I'm the guitar player with the Chambers Brothers at the, you know, prior to that. And they stayed back room in the, in the dressing room. They seen the guitar, he loved it, and he bought it. It was $1,300. Was it the white I, one? The white one. Yeah. I, and actually, that was the black one. That you repainted white? Repainted white, because that's just a whole other story mm -hmm. for another time. So the Les Paul, I didn't want to, you know, sell it. It was a Les Paul, but I'm not really a Les Paul player, because... You know, as you start to mature as a, a player, there's different things that weigh in, like the weight of the instrument, A. I never could understand why they would put four dials, two tones, two volumes. So that's why you sold my, my Les Paul? It's not your Les Paul, it was my Les Paul. And Andy loved it, and it happened to, that one happened to be a brown sun. But the, the worst part about it, and if I recall this... Because Andy stuck it to you. <laughs> Listen, Andy, if you're watching this, I know you stuck it to him. <laughs> it, he's talk, actually, I didn't mention him by name in this video, but he's talking about Andy Graziano, who you've seen on this channel, who's a phenomenal guitar player. Um, a wonderful guy. Yeah. His dad, his dad, rest in peace, and myself, were, you know, we were two fathers of, uh, of Andy and Richie, and we were so proud of them. Well, he was more proud of Andy than I was of you, because Andy would never do this to... <laughs> You're just being a dick, Rich. No, no, but the worst part is like you go there and you see that the guitar is missing. Oh, I sold it. I don't. I believe you didn't tell me who you sold it to. No, I didn't. No, I, I sold it. You asked me, did you sell it? Yeah, I sold it. And then I went. Should to, I didn't go? And I sold it to Andy. Well, it was a nice Would that way. Have been to, nice coming from me. It was. Yeah, it was nicer going to band practice that night and saying, "Hey, look at my new guitar." There's a store here, and believe it or not, we have to sell instruments. And I don't go to try to sell the one I make the most money off of or the one who's the, the worst instrument I have. I always try to give okay. the best instrument I have. And that was the best instrument I had there. I, you know what, I understand that, and I agree with you. You're 100% right. You're not gonna forgive me, are you? No, that one I can forgive you for, it. but keep watching. My father said, you gotta get your own guitar. And, and I hadn't like thought about that, because to me the guitar was just like a thing I needed to play. I wasn't like, ooh, guitars. So he said, what do you like about guitars? Like, what are you looking for? I said, well, to be honest, I really liked the way your Les Paul sounded, but I didn't love the neck. I kind of liked the neck on my my uh, Squire, you know, Fender kind of neck. And he said, "All right, so you're looking for something with like a Fendery neck, and you know, and Les Paul pickups." You know, it's funny. Like that sounds like such an easy thing to do nowadays. Yeah. But in you know, 1996, there weren't a ton of guitars like no. that. No. No. You know. The, well, the market changes. Mm -hmm. it, it shifts. Yeah. I think you and Chris. When I described like the problem I was having, I said I want the hot yes. pickups, but I like the the like the telly right. kind of neck. You said, ah, I think yeah. you know. You, I think you or Chris said you should try that new Van Halen guitar. Right. Yeah. So we did. So we went to my friend's place. I use the word friend. So we got to my, this guy's place. Hey, how you doing? Great, great, great. My son is very interested, and he had like two or three of them there, mm -hmm. and they were very pretty guitars. Yeah. And my son plays it, and I see that look like, Dad, I gotta have this. <laughs> so, me as a father who loves his son, I love you. I love you too, Dad. I love my son. I, I said, okay, I wanna get it. And uh, the guy wanted to sell it to me for complete list price. And I looked at him like like I was, I was a hydro with three heads. And went, list price? Not even give me any discount off? I knew it would have sold for wholesale. So he was, uh, no, no, I'm, I'm selling them and, uh, you know, and I, I can't get rid of this. And I got three of them and, and he wouldn't. And I was, I called another friend of mine and I won't mention this guy's name because this man is an absolute gentleman and he still is to this day. How old are you? I'm going to be 40 in a week. And how old when we got the guitar? I was 16. 
So this is, do the math there, this is 24 years yeah. ago. So 24 years ago, uh, I was already a salesman for, for the same companies I was dealing with. I was selling heritage guitars and kawaii basses. Uh, I went up to a friend of mine, at, uh, Mike DeBella at O DeBella's in uh, Teaneck, New Jersey. He's a good man, good friend. And we still, as stores, we cooperate with each other fabulously. I mean, we, we, we like brothers. And uh, him in another place, I, I work with it, very close. And uh, he had one. So I take Richie up there, and he sold it to me at wholesale cost. Not a, He didn't want to make a nickel on me. And I was so happy, because, you know, I tried out my son get this guitar. And he got it, and he still has it. But you know what happens to great guitars? They age. They're like humans. They age. And I, th that guitar is, is so special to me, though. Like it's that guitar changed my life. It yeah. changed how I felt about guitars. It had, you know, it had a Floyd Rose on it. And from you, you were like, <laughs> you like, don't get a Floyd Rose. Yeah. <laughs> you, you saw that thing, and you went, Ugh. but you know, I really ended up bonding with the Floyd Rose, and especially the way it is in that guitar, the blocked. The way it's blocked, like yeah. that really, you know, shaped the rest of my, you know, journey as a musician, that guitar. Yeah. And I, I still love that guitar, it's awesome. Yeah. It's a great guitar. Mm -hmm. This is a Burns Brian May Red Special-ish guitar. I say ish because it's not really an exact replica of the Red Special. This is kind of like an affordable version. Instead of having the, uh, you know, custom spring uh, motorcycle handlebar tremolo, you have a regular Strat style tremolo and it has these whack locky tuners and you know it's not i don't think it's chambered like like the red special but it looks the part it sounds great and this is one that my dad got for me as a gift uh, a rep came into his music store trying to open the line the burns line and my dad wasn't really interested in doing that but he ended up buying the reps sample like the sample he would show to the dealers because my dad was like, I like that guitar. I'll buy that guitar from you. So it was really cool. And right, then any, when any, I was doing Queen songs. Any problem with that? No. That's what happened, right? Yeah. Okay. Just want to make sure I'm not crazy. You're big on that, though, because especially like if it's a NAMM show and someone says to you, oh, here's the new model. You say, okay, that's nice. I want that. Yeah. And there's so many times, like we talk about it later, like I played a Fender at the NAMM show, and I said, ooh, let me order this model. And then when you get it, it's not that. It's, it has nothing to do with that nothing. guitar. Yeah, I always put the demo, mm -hmm. because I know what this is. Yeah. I don't know what you got. Think about buying guitars on eBay and Reverb. It's really tough, and it's a it's crap like buying shoot. dentures on Reverb. I mean, look, and I'm not knocking Reverb. We, we love Reverb. We I use, use it. We use Reverb. Um, everybody who buys stuff on Reverb, they usually don't tell you about the, the fact that you know ha you have to sell half of what you get. Yeah, because it's not that it's bad. It's just that it's like, oh, this is not what I wanted. You I know? Today, I, we a guy got you a uh, a three thirty nine in red. You wanted, you loved my three thirty nine in sunburst. He says, I hate sunburst. I, I want don't play red. sunburst. So I get him a red one, and it has nothing to do with the other one. Outside of they have the same model number, mm -hmm. and they look like it, but they're just different colors. But it still doesn't play like it, and and that's why guitar players are all crazy. Yeah, because you say, what is it about that guitar that makes me play and, better? And they tell you, they tell you, oh no, it's CNC'd, it's the exact same neck, and then you pick it up and you're like, no, it's not. No, they're, they're full of. Shit. This beauty here is a Squire. I think it's probably early 2000s Squire Tele made in Indonesia. Uh, <laughs> I wanted a, uh, okay, this is this is the story behind this one. When I was a kid, and dad, if you're watching, I'm sorry for bringing this up yet again, but tough. Anyway, when I was a kid, my really? dad had this pink Did, telly gonna bring it that up I was absolutely here. in love with, and same story as Les Paul. Go. One day I went down to <laughs> play it and it was gone. But you know, my dad's in the music, you know, retail business anyway, so. Oh, you forgive me. Expected. I forgive you a little so, bit. So the thing about that telly is it had this really nice rounded neck. And okay, talk about, uh, what was that telly? Because I It had a really rounded neck and you have a really flat head. <laughs> <laughs> no, but, uh, okay, here's the thing. Let me tell you about this telly. Okay. This telly came in, uh, I don't know, I think I bought a bunch, a couple of guitars. And it was like, yeah, it looks like a telly. And I didn't even trust it being a telly. The neck might have been a 61 or a 63 or whatever it was. And it had it was a lot of bird's eye, and I and I don't like when I have bird's eye, because I don't trust it as integrity. Mm -hmm. And uh, it was a guitar that I put. I didn't even care about. It wasn't one. Oh, this one I love. I sold the guitar I love because I needed the money. It isn't that thing. You, 
you know what's funny? I didn't care about that guitar either until it was gone. Like it was one of those things I didn't realize how much I liked it until like well, you gotta you gotta speak up. Yeah, you, you, you know, raise your voice. Yeah, but you know, like the other thing is it had active EMG pickups in it. I think. Yeah. And and he and he was not not a fan of those. No. Anything that needs a battery while you're playing. This, and it, this is a know. Demarzio household, Staten Island. <laughs> yeah. But um, yeah. So he the it would have this. You know what? You know what it is? If I played that guitar today, I bet you it wouldn't be anything the way I remember because I was a, a, a smaller. Kid. Okay, this is this yeah. is exactly like when you said uh, a girl that you broke up with badly, and and uh, like a, an old girlfriend, mm -hmm. and then you only remember the good times. The years later, no, that's, then you you get back. You go, oh, I haven't seen you in 15, 20 years. And you mean you say, yeah, now I know why I got rid of it because she was a pain in the neck or whatever. Do you, do you remember who you sold it to? No. Um, if you ever see it again, can you can you pick it up for me? <laughs> if I do, I would, of course. You can pick it up and just smash it. No, I wouldn't smash it. I wouldn't smash it. I would pick it up just to prove to you that you're a horse's ass, <laughs> that it wasn't that good of a guitar. Believe me, if it was that good of a Telecaster, I would have kept it. This is a Fender 50s road-worn Telecaster. It's made in Mexico. It's a really cool guitar. Um, it's relic, like to say, road-worn. Uh, they put some dings in it, and they actually did a nice job of it, unlike the job I did on the Disgusto caster. So, this is a guitar I played at the NAMM show at the Fender booth, and I picked it up and I said, oh, there's the neck, there's the neck from the old pink telly. Oh, by the way, if you uh, have seen a, me, an 80s Jesus. Telecaster, pink, with like uh, EMG pickups in it, and uh, it's got the big block logo. I hope I find uh, it. Send me an email. I really uh, do. Here's what it looks like. Look, there it is. Remember? Okay. Yeah, yeah. Anyway, I'm gonna, so I'm gonna pay, at the NAMM show, I'll I played that guitar and it felt like Just to show you what a turd you are. Uh, so I ordered one I got from AMM. Hold on. This guitar is about one fifth the weight. Now, the neck isn't what he likes because it has, has a This is a nice guitar, actually. The Tom Anderson that's 19 years old. It's dead mint. Dead mint. I mean, look, look. You can, no, it's very nice. Dead mint. It was a ba bought by a bass player who didn't play it. He might have three hours in, in 19 years. And I bought it back. It was so new that if you look at the back of the serial number. Well, a lot of people ask me about Anderson because you love Anderson. That's yeah. your favorite. The reason well, I, I I think they're very nice. The reason they I don't can't make play their neck size. They won't do a 10-inch radius. They'll do 12 or 14. That's it. They only make guitars for men. And uh, that's why he's doing <laughs> So I went through the video, and I want to thank you for your time. And I think everybody is very grateful to hear your side of the story, whether it be true or not. I mean, <laughs> thank you, Dad, for taking the time to do this. Uh, if you're ever in Staten Island, please come by and check out Castellano's House of Music. My father will probably try to buy you food. Uh, <laughs> but if you're a good person, you'll buy him food. No, I don't. <laughs> I'm, on, I'm on a different diet now, so salads I'm eating. Yeah. Thank you, Dad. I love you, Rich. Love you. All right. Thanks for watching. Please like and subscribe. If tone. You... Tone. Tone. I can't read. It's all about tone. If you like this video, let us know. And let us know in the comments if you want to see a video on my dad's stuff, on his amp collection and his guitar collection. So that could be cool. Would you be okay with doing that? I uh, charge. He charges. <laughs> so we'll be. We'll have a GoFundMe set up. No. <laughs> of course. Anything. Any, I'll do anything for you. All right, guys. See you next time. God bless.